Hello, everyone. Welcome to another IR capsule for the Shankar IAS Academy. Last week, we spoke about the Raisina dialogue in Delhi, which was participated by about 99 countries, senior officials, ministers, etc. And I said that this was an inopportune time for a dialogue like that, because quite unnecessarily, the focus was on India's position on the Russia-Ukraine war. European leaders, one after the others, questioned India as to why India was on the side of autocrats and not of democrats. And so the two days of conversations, the much of the time was taken by the Minister of External Affairs, defending, as it were, India's position in a kind of combative manner. He, 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 he told them back that India is an independent country and we do not want any kind of advice beyond uh, what is necessary. Even in the United Nations, Ambassador Tirumurthy said, uh, don't tell us what um, we should do. We know what we should be doing in international affairs. So it was some kind of a tit for tat dialogue. And that didn't seem to go very well with India's very good relations with Europe. So, but within a few days after that, President Narendra, Prime Minister Narendra Modi himself went to several European countries. Of course, he went to three places, but in uh, Germany, he had a meeting with the new chancellor. Uh, then he went to Copenhagen, Denmark, where the Nordic states, six of them met. There was a Nordic summit. And afterwards, on his way back, he also met uh, President Macron of uh, France, who has recently been re-elected. This may have been a coincidence. Maybe these meetings were fixed long ago. I don't know. Particularly the summit, it could not have been called in a few days. But maybe he combined it with Germany and France to give a better perspective on what is happening in Europe. The one change that has taken, taken place in Europe after uh, President Putin invaded Ukraine was that there is a greater uni unity between the NATO countries and generally Europe with the United States. Because during the President Trump's days, you know, he distanced himself further and further away from his allies. He felt that the United States was spending so too much money on NATO. And they, he told them that they should spend their own money to strengthen their defenses, and the United States cannot keep on paying for it. And uh, Europeans resented it, and there was a certain amount of defense opinion from between President Trump and NATO as a whole. And that had created some misunderstanding, and uh, the European Union leaders were saying that now we have to stand on our own, we cannot depend on the United States, etc. This was the state of affairs when President Trump lost the election and left the scene. Uh, President Biden immediately tried to rebuild this relationship. He went to Europe, talked to various people, and generally gave the impression that the United States depends on European Union and NATO as their most important allies. Of course, they were their most important allies all through. But uh, the, the disturbances, the things that started during President Trump's time, they had the impression that they had to work on their own, which of course gave us an opportunity of dealing with these countries independent of the United States. We were working with Germany, we were working with France, we were working with UK, and there wasn't much of a uh, coordination between them and the United States with regard to India. But after the war started, NATO, European Union, all of them have come much closer to the United States. And the United States welcomed it and started supporting them and also giving them arms and ammunition as necessary. And also started siding the Ukrainian government against uh, Moscow. And so this, this new unity between the Europeans and the Americans has created a slight problem for us because the Americans and the Europeans started saying the same things. They have uh, the same kind of opinion uh, that uh, Putin is a dangerous uh, dictator. He must be defeated. 
and uh, even the soft spoken europeans like the uh, scandinavians or the nordics etc all united against uh, against putin and that unity was demonstrated in the number of uh, sanctions now the sanctions have gone into hundreds of sanctions and uh, all these countries about 41 countries in the world have got together and imposed very strict sanctions against uh, um putin and consequently there is a problem everywhere not only in europe but also in asia africa everywhere there is a crunch there is an energy crunch taking place people are trying to find ways of escaping it there is a food security problem and there is a security problem itself and there is a nuclear threat so all these new elements have come up after february as a result of this and nobody knows where this war is going and uh, the europeans and the americans have said we will not fight any war we will meet this crisis by uh, you know sanctions and so this is a, so it's a sensible a sensitive situation and what they cannot understand what america cannot understand and what the other european union countries also don't understand is why india is not on the side of democracies Well, these are all democracies, and there is a movement towards unity of democracies, etc. And in this situation, how come India is with Russia? Of course, we are not with Russia. We have made it very clear. We have criticized what Russia has done, and uh, but what we did not do is to join the, of course, voting, abstaining on the resolutions is one thing. Then, uh, not joining the sanctions because these sanctions are not un sanctions so it's not compulsory it is advisory that they have given every country to boycott russia but we could not boycott russia because of our good relations with russia one and secondly we felt that we must somehow contribute to the resolution of the problems of energy of food etc by trying to be helpful and this has been seen by the americans as well as the europeans as some kind of a uh, problem in their relationship with uh, india so all of them came to india basically to find out why india is taking this position and also to persuade us to change our position all of them mentioned their strong ties with india the beneficiary cooperation that we have these countries and therefore on the whole the the dialogue left a kind of as they say a bad taste in the mouth as far as india and europe are concerned and this is why this visit was very important of course i'm sure mr modi when he went to miss west meet these leaders they must have talked to him about ukraine definitely and he must have given an answer but it has been mentioned in all the joint communiques that ukraine was mentioned together with various other things but the focus mr modi ensured is on a long term cooperation with Europe and USA, not to link it with the present problem. It is a problem which has to be solved, and everyone wants it to be solved. And India is taking the position that we have taken the best way to solve it. That is reconciliation, diplomacy, ceasefire, coming to an agreement, and not war or sanctions. So, but when we say no war or sanctions against Russia, an impression is created that we are trying to be. on the side of russia which for americans are the uh, europeans wrong side of history as they call it because india is a democracy of penalty on the side of uh, russia but we must remember that we had good relations with russia even in the cold war during the cold war and nobody complained because there was some mutuality mutuality of interest between india and russia and uh, russia was the only country who was willing to you know buy indian consumer goods and uh, in exchange we were able to get heavy machinery industry so that's how it started it was not an ideological linkage at all but a linkage of mutuality and there was greater mutuality between india and uh, soviet union than with the united states that was the reason and therefore we were able to manage to do many things in india thanks to united states without having to go through the americans or using the us dollars so there was a rupee arrangement rupee ruble arrangement even at that time so in two cases we decided to bring back those arrangements one was to buy 
Russian oil. We also used to buy earlier, but Russian oil was available at a cheaper price after the war. And then we decided to buy some, a few tons of oil at a cheaper price. And also, uh, we started talking about a rupee ruble arrangement so that whatever trade which takes place with Russia is uh, calculated on a differential basis, something like a barter arrangement. So these two things, they found them quite offensive, that India is not doing the right thing. But in uh, Delhi, we made it very clear we are not going to change this policy, but uh, we look forward to better relations with Europe in the long term. And so that is what he did in each of these countries. In Germany, for example, you know, so the, the, the questioning on, on Ukraine must have continued and the Prime Minister must have said several things. But what we did was to say that uh, once the war is solved, or the war solution is a different matter. And for that, effort is being made by everybody else. But we would like to look beyond it rather than look at the war. So, but this uh, approach by India that we should look beyond the war and not to solve the war was considered unethical or unacceptable to them. So, so he talked to them, or immediate concern, immediate consequence of the war was the increased cooperation, as I, as I mentioned earlier. So in Germany, for example, he was going there a fifth time, it shows how deep our good relations with Germany is. And he has gone there for the first time after the new chancellor was elected. So this was a good opportunity for him to meet the new chancellor and also to talk about the various linkages between India and Germany. Most important being economic, not only economic or climate change, because the Europeans had a softer attitude to climate change than the Americans. All through, they have supported several initiatives. Uh, so they were, we have very strong ties with them. And on climate change, we also have this uh, international solar alliance for which we have great support from France. And we have had a, sorry, from Germany, uh, and Germany also uh, has had, uh, one of the, Germany is one of the big, biggest trading partners. So we started discussing these, what are the things that we can do between Germany and India? Uh, we, rather than de talking about the war, we should talk about what the multifaceted relation between India and Europe was. And that was much more fundamental to the situation and all the future rather than looking at one single issue. Ukraine is only a single issue, it's geopolitical. But at the same time, that should not cloud our relationship with Germany, because that is much more important. So the fundamental and a solitary issue of a geopolitical relevance. And uh, so we started the, for example, there have been five times India, Germany, intergovernmental consultations are taking place. And they'll help India to give critical importance to long-standing commercial ties. So this meeting took place and uh, strategic partnership was emphasized. Trade, technology cooperation, climate change, were of a continuing nature while the war was a temporary uh, phenomenon. And so the bilateral discussions on partnerships between the two countries went very well because the Germans also realized that it was important for them to continue this uh, partnership because it is beneficial to both countries. And they're a big trading partner for us, beneficial to them in that way. And therefore we talked about Indo-Pacific where they have an interest because so they are not part of the Quad, but uh, Indo-Pacific they have been trying to, basically because of their problems with China, they have been working uh, with us then strategic partnership, including post-COVID recovery, so that is a major challenge at this time. Then there is an Indian diaspora also in Germany, not very big, and they assemble and uh, 
uh, Prime Minister Modi addressed them and he challenged them to, you know, come to India's help, send tourists here, and uh, generally be supportive, and they all promised. And the indication given that Germany would invite India, because Germany is going to chair the G7 meeting. You know, the G7 are the richest industrialized countries in the world. And uh, they have been a very powerful force in the world. Of course, after COVID, they haven't had any uh, exchanges. It may be informal, but there was no formal meeting. And now they are having a meeting of uh, G7. And we are not members of G7, but the host can invite us. And therefore, Germany has given an indication. Though earlier, there was some indication that because of our Ukraine position, we may not be invited to G7. But now they have agreed that they will invite us. And the expectation is that the focus will be not on uh, Ukraine alone. And there will be other things to be discussed and India can make a contribution. Uh, as far as the India Nordic summit is concerned, these are the most, some of the most prosperous and peaceful nations in the world. Denmark, Finland, Iceland, Norway, and Sweden. So these countries are called Nordic countries. And they have had very good relationship with us. Uh, they are particularly interested in uh, economic assistance uh, to developing countries. And uh, they have lots of programs in India, poverty alleviation and development projects. And this has been going on. They have not been very active in politics. But the Ukraine war has brought war to their doorstep. And so they have concerns. And so they also welcomed a meeting with Prime Minister Modi. And they said that discussed several things. Uh, they were actually anxious to know what the power equations of the world would be. Because that is the big question mark. What will happen to Putin and what will happen to Russia once the war is over? There are two views. One, it may be that... Uh, uh, it may be that the situation will become so bad uh, that a world war might start. And the other is that probably this will be end soon and the uh, present constellation of countries may remain. But if a war happens or a big change in alliances and so on, there will be a big problem. So they would like to know and they must have picked Mr. Modi's brains as to what he thought the future would be. So in the new world order, what India would be able to do, they were anxious to know. And uh, the discussions were uh, quite good, uh, because even though they may have had concerns about India's position on Ukraine, they did not press that beyond the point. They concentrated and, uh, uh, on the uh, cooperation between India and the Nordic countries rather than, on, uh, rather than on the war. But they also were concerned about the fact that India was not cooperating in the sanctions. Because if sanctions was the only thing that they are doing against Russia, it is in their interest to see that uh, sanctions continue and they are enforced. So they must have tried uh, to, uh, to uh, focus on uh, these things also when it comes up. And uh, much of the conversation on the subject may have been left to the US. So they may not be actively campaigning for all this because of the new understanding between US and uh, Europe. Many, much of the conversation may take place from the US, India, and Europe. So we do not know what the next meeting will be. We have had a virtual summit between uh, Prime Minister and uh, President Biden. So, so these issues related to the Ukraine may be discussed at the American level, and uh, the other countries can uh, work out their own relationship. So, in uh, from the reports from Germany indicated that uh, they are really expecting a change in the Indian attitude. So, but Mr. Modi in all these meetings stressed that the multifaceted relationship between India and Europe was much more fundamental. That is the point that he made and commercial ties and strategic partnership, etc. So, as I said, 
invitation to G7 is a plus point, and everything else, business as usual. That is the effort that he made, and he must have made, the, made some impact. So that was about Germany and then Nordic countries. Um, he asked, Mr. Modi asked Nordic companies uh, to invest in uh, the blue economy. You know what the blue economy is relating to the ocean, that is Sagar Mala project, etc. Because all these countries are small countries with huge oceans around it, and they are very good in uh, maritime security and maritime uh, development. And so he suggested that they should come. And then the Arctic region, like the Antarctic region, is an Arctic region, which is now a kind of a, uh, what shall we say, inheritance of, the, of humanity. It is left without any particular ownership of any particular country. But there is an Arctic uh, agreement under which all of us are able to and allowed to go and do research there. So India has already got an Arctic policy and the Prime Minister maintained that this Arctic policy was very much in keeping with the policy of the Nordic countries. So that was identified as another new area of cooperation uh, between India and the Nordic countries. And then came France. France also was very important. As I said, uh, Mr. Macron has just won an election. It is a tough election. He, was, he had to go to a second round. And finally, he won with a narrow majority. And the, the uh, right extremist groups are becoming stronger and stronger in France. And so we do not know how long Mr. Macron will continue as president. He has to sort out some of the things. It's not going to be easy. But luckily, he has won the election. And he is very friendly to India. And so uh, Mr. Modi th thought that he must connect with him uh, so that, uh, uh, you know, the business as usual. We also have uh, nuclear cooperation with France. In fact, France had agreed to set up some nuclear power stations in India after the nuclear deal. But then because of the liability law, uh, he was not able to do so. And also there was some criticism that these French nuclear uh, stations were not very efficient and it's not been proved. Although 80% of their uh, nuclear power, electric power is produced from nuclear uh, reactors. But in India, there was some criticism that uh, uh, these are not proved. But anyway, it's not come about. The Americans wanted to give us six reactors. That has not come about. So eventually what we have, the only foreign reactors we have are in Kudangrom, which was set up by the uh, Russians at the time of the Soviet Union. It goes back to Gorbachev and Rajiv Gandhi days. And it's still working. Some hitches here and there, but it produces a certain amount of nuclear power, which is uh, very useful. So, the effort, this was a kind of, I call it a fence mending visit. You know, you have to mend your fences with your friends when you have any problem between us. So there is a period when Mr. Modi and the Indian leadership is engaged in mending the fence between India and Europe. And that was his objective. And also to accelerate the process of cooperation in spite of what our positions we have been taking on Ukraine. So he stressed again and again the importance of our being together, even after the war, and also how to cooperate in order to improve the situation. And uh, also to keep an eye on the international relations, which way it is going. So I'm sure President Macron must have been very anxious to hear what Mr. Modi has to say about the situation. And uh, uh, then they, the uh, French also gave a new number of new proposals in order for India and France to enhance its cooperation. So, by doing this in these three capitals and dealing with uh, several European countries, he may have, in a way, succeeded in uh, creating an impression of positive relationship and uh, having explained why we did the, about the oil, why we are trying to 
build a rupee ruble arrangement and how these things are all very old arrangements etc i think he has given them some hope that there will be uh, mutuality and also mutual interest and there will be a business as usual if not better than as a result of his message but some reports coming in today i don't know some of you may have read an article in the hindu um uh, uh, by a friend of mine shanti maria disusa she is a strategy thinker she is actually a specialist on uh, afghanistan uh, but she is also working for some institutions in germany and uh, she happened to be in germany during this period and after her conversations with several germans she wrote an article today in the hindu saying that yes the visit was fine as far as it went but there is a certain amount of dissonance that's the word she used certain dissonance that is lack of uh what shall we say harmony because when you have harmony you don't have dissonance you say when you when you play music music is okay but sometimes you no know, one instrument goes away from there or goes wrong or one musician goes to sleep or whatever happens then there will be a certain dissonance coming in and it has to be rectified then only the music can go on so in her view there is a certain dissonance because of india's position on the thing at the same time people do realize in germany uh, that india and germany have many things to do in common together uh, in a new situation of a uh, uh, india so us and china cold war or us china russia cold war all these situations we have to be prepared for it. so germany like france is anxious was anxious to do all this but in her opinion it will help matters if india shifted its position a little bit and that may take time and therefore what she is saying is that though and i can believe this they may not contest anything that uh, we tell them and we may have they have now gone along with all the projects that we had proposed earlier but there must be some dissonance somewhere that we are not fully with them and that remains even after the uh, visit and it will take a little time for it to uh, subside so new alliances are coming up russia china alliance you know about so there are several situations and depending on the end of the war there will be no cons- new constellations new arrangements and uh, india and europe should stand together then only we can benefit from whatever new world geopolitical world that we will see in the future so on the one hand we have a little apprehension about india particularly about the conflict between uh, authoritarianism and europe and democracy we don't see it that way but they do see it that way we deal with russia not because it is authoritarian we are not interested in their internal politics uh, but now there is a, a challenge to all that and so our best bet is to of course end the war if we can and many people think that india is in a good position to mediate or help but india is not in a mood to do that because we are generally against mediation and arbitration etc it should be diplomacy and dialogue that's our position so we have been encouraging that but many people think that now that india is uh, uh, neutral maybe india is a country which can propose something but what can we propose we already proposed the um, cease fire we have already proposed the humanitarian assistance we have already proposed uh, stopping of uh, refugee flows from uh, ukraine all this we have talked about but to give them a formula what kind how can we give them a formula about nato how can we give them a formula about russia wanting to get back the glory of the soviet union so these are things which we cannot handle and therefore that is not likely but there is expectation that india might be able to do something and if we are able to do something it will be even better otherwise we have to wait out the war and see the situation is and then jump in and go forward and behind all this you can see china is lurking 
and uh, they are not taking a very active position on this. But we know very clearly that they are on the side of, the, of Russia. And also they have ideas about what to do with Taiwan. And if Ukraine was just an experiment as to how to deal with the Taiwan, because they have agreed to help each other, just as China will help Russia to deal with Ukraine, while Russia will help China to deal with Taiwan. That's a much, much bigger issue. And uh, that's another time when we may have to make up our, our mind as to where we stand. So, as far as the visit is concerned, my assessment is that was very helpful. It may get our relationship back with the European Union, but behind it all is their concern about India's supporting an authoritarian regime. They don't see India-Russia relations as an innocent, uh, you know, political, economic relationship, but something which has resulted in some kind of a dissatisfaction for them because they are not able to impose sanctions effectively. But time heals, and time heals as countries develop and develop mutual interests. And that is what we have, and that is what Prime Minister Modi stressed during his visit. Anyway, I hope things are clear. You understood the thrust of what I said. And this is very important from your examination perspective, <laughs> because any of these things can come up. And so please keep reading newspapers and following these developments till the very first day of your examination or your, till your examination is over. So none, nothing is unimportant, particularly for those who are taking the prelims. Because anything and everything, and words like Nordic Summit, or, uh, various uh, cooperation projects and all that, come in because we don't know. So it's important for you to follow these developments.